Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, I didn't realize it had been four days since the last video until a friend emailed me about it. And uh, all I've got to say is moving used to be so easy for me. I would move every year, sometimes more. I once got out of a lease because my downstairs neighbor had a car that idled too loud. He wasn't even revving the engine, just he had a rice burner and he had it set however, so just turning and just letting it idle was like loud. It's like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. So I just, I was able to, uh, it was like uh, 30 days and you could get out of the lease with no problem. So I was just like, yeah, just let me out. Um, but after being in the same place for five years, now it's like, oh my God, it's like everything just looks so lame. I've evaluated four different cities, uh, either online or traveling to them. And uh, let's just run down the list. New York City, $3,500 for a dump in a nowhere special part of Brooklyn. Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, a giant suburb full of Brady Bunch houses. Austin, uh, I kind of forgot <laughs> why I left. So I forgot that Austin is just crumbling shacks that are two or three grand and a bunch of completely soulless condos. They are now building these like fake neighborhoods that look like, I don't know, like Disney, New York City, something like that. Um, Miami almost happened, but the found a great place and it just got rented out from under me. Um, so, uh, yeah, this sucks. Um, <laughs> so, but the whole time I've been keeping track of, uh, New York Comic Con and, um, uh, one of the constant, um, things that I like to pay attention to is trends. And the thing that I keep seeing over and over again is that all of the enthusiasm, it's like. There's a hole in the ozone layer of comics and it's all just gone out of that hole. And there's, it's, it's like the entire fandom is on SSRIs and you can only get so excited and then you just level out. So uh, they just had New York Comic Con and it was, <coughs> it was nothing. It was absolutely nothing. The announcements were just completely lame, generic. I mean, it was stuff like, well, there's more about the, is Frank Miller talking to Marvel Comics? Well, if he did, it was just casually because nothing was announced. Ooh, there's a Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver miniseries written by Steve Orlando. Hey, Mark Brooks, you know the guy who draws X-Men covers? He's drawing an X-Men cover. Again. These are the announcements. Ooh, is Scott Snyder going to do an Ultimate Universe? Well, if he is, it will be announced <laughs> some other time. Hey, uh, are you excited about Thundercats? Are you excited about Declan Shalvey? <laughs> what is that like when you put like an acid together with a base and they like neutralize each other? I was describing Declan Shalvey as the... Uh, I'm so hungry that I would eat at Arby's of comic book pros. It's better just if you put him on a book, just don't tell anyone. Just just let them open and be like, after they bought it, be like, oh, it's written by Declan Shelby. Um, but I mean, there was uh, some good that came out of New York Comic Con. It got Mags to get high off her ass wandering out into the streets making these lunatic faces, I think a well check might be in order. Just saying. And then the other weird thing is like, <sighs> Heather Antos. This is this really weird trend that I've noticed in the last few years. It used to be, if somebody went to a convention, it was like, hey, we're here. Hey, we're setting up. Hey, it's about to open. Oh my gosh, here come the crowds. Oh, uh, look what celebrity stopped by. Oh, we actually sold out of this book. Oh, um, but we ran back to the uh, warehouse and we got more of it. Now, 
the announcements are New York City Comic Con is about to start and now it's done. It's like nothing happened during the convention that you, a senior editor, wanted to talk about in any way, shape, or form. And this is this is the standard at conventions for the last few years. Um, but uh, we had the uh, the real news there. Someone just took a dump on the sh on the show floor of New York Comic Con. That New York Comic Con dump was it a bad dog? Um, so. Okay, it was a dog. That, that was the huge, the huge story was, hey, there's a poop on the floor. Oh, a dog did it. Like, are we supposed to believe, like, just like somebody just took a shit right there and nobody noticed? Of course, like, literally the most obvious answer imaginable. And somehow this got two articles. And um, Comic Speed was actually even more boring. New, uh, New York Comic Con. Robert Kirkman celebrated 20 years of The Walking Dead and Invincible. Okay. So I did a video uh, the other day, but um, uh, <laughs> I just got way too, I don't know, mean? Accurate? I think both. Um, but I was talking about how there is this kind of, this fog. This fog that lays upon the industry and it's the reason we get stuff like Declan Shalvey on Thundercats Steve Orlando on Scarlet it's because even though quote-unquote cancel culture is over they're all still around they're being less vocal about it but they're always watching they're always plotting so after it's been like six years now. You've had six years of people afraid to offend, which also means they are afraid to excite. Um, aware that they are being watched constantly. And so all you get is just tepid takes, lukewarm temperatures, and there's no excitement. Because, oh boy, what if Heidi McDonald gets bothered? What if Tess Fowler gets bothered? What if Alex DeCampi gets... Why is it always women? It's, all, it's, it's always women. All the people that people are afraid of in comics are women or trans women. And it's become this awful kind of scared atmosphere uh, with uh, timid men um, pitching the most bland stories imaginable and what is there to get excited about there's there's nothing i mean like what's the point of scott snyder coming back to dc to start his own ultimate universe when he's just gonna leave the next time a bunch of mean girls target you and mean girls never stop targeting you they will shift focus for a little while but they never take you off the list ever so Scott Snyder is going to be on their shit list no matter how many of them he hires or promotes or whatever and everyone's scared which means you have really timid tepid stories and that <coughs> has leached all of the excitement out of the industry this is now essentially generational I mean I started collecting comics in 1988 like on a weekly basis by 1994 like I was like a veteran fan it's like like a lot had happened that six years is a lot of years if you got to sent to jail for six years you would be crying you're like, this is a huge chunk of my life. That is a long time. And it's six years of mean girls terrorizing an industry. A bunch of chicks who don't even read comics. And all these 40, 50, 60-year-old men are like, oh, uh, okay, just, just do whatever they want. You're not married to them. They're just going to do their little 
covens and their little uh, cauldrons. I think comics need to get a lot more offensive. <laughs> um, the other thing is I like to look at um, uh, real life for lessons. And uh, last week I bought a battery for my uh, electric mower, a Ryobi battery, uh, because the other one wasn't charging, although it might have been a problem with the charger. So then I order uh, a new charger and a new battery. But I find out that the old battery was actually good. It just had a bad charger. So I put the uh, old battery on the new charger and it, it's acting like a new battery. This is my this is my version of an Aesop's fable. Okay, so I thought it was a problem with the battery. It was a problem with the charger. When I got a new charger, the old battery works great. But now I have a second battery, right? That's great. Except the new battery is dead. The new battery has been on a shelf at an Amazon warehouse for so long that the uh, charge has gone down below the level where the charger will recognize this is a battery. It just thinks it's inert matter. So I started doing some research about, is there some way to, I don't know, is there like a little hatch on the side and you open that and then you press and hold a button or something like that. So you see all of these TikToks and videos that say, easy way to revive your dead Ryobi battery. And they are very, very easy if you are a professional electrician. <laughs> so all of the videos are like, uh, take this bit that no person has, that only elect electricians have. Take this bit and put it in your drill. And then uh, open it up and take out your voltmeter. Everyone's got a voltmeter, right? Every like that's, you go to the kitchen cabinet. It's like a hammer two screwdrivers, voltmeter. Everyone's got a voltmeter, right? And then you have to know about uh, amps and volts and test it out. And then, then you take like an AC adapter and you like cut the wire and then you like uh, uh, splay or unsplay. The wires are wrapped around each other. You undo that and then you put that on one of the, the terminals inside of the Ryobi battery and then if you don't burn the whole house down you will save $50 or whatever it is to uh, get a new one but this made me think in two ways about the comic book industry there's nothing wrong with the industry it's just got a bad charger it's plugged into a bunch of mean girls who just want to work in Hollywood you put that into another charger the battery works just fine the other thing about the new battery is that there's a point where something is so depleted that it can only be revived by experts. Mark Millar did, a, I think it was a blog post or an interview like a month or two ago, and he was saying something really crazy. He was like, to get sales in comics, we should rehire all of the guys who sold a lot of comics. This was as crazy as when Grant Morrison took over the Justice League in the late 1990s. And he's like, okay, what if, what if the Justice League was Superman, Batman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and who, who is else? There's another character on there. And I remember at the time, like, the coverage of it was so insane. It's like, Grant Morrison's crazy idea to put the most popular characters in the Justice League. It's like, well, no shit. Um, but <coughs> this <coughs> industry has been depleted to the point that it can only be revived by experts. You can't have Declan Shalvey. It can't be that level of tepid wimp writing books. Or what's that? God, I saw this one article. It's like, Al Ewing might possibly write Doctor Strange. It's like, no part of that <laughs> statement was interesting or exciting. So what are we supposed to do? It's like, ooh, I hope it's true. Even if it's true, it's just like, okay, all right. 
You can't have this B, C, and D level talent managed by F level editors and get anything good. The industry has been depleted to the point that only experts can revive it. And if you don't do that, it's just a, a slow death. That's all it is. Yes, technically, comics will still come out, but I mean, was anyone excited about anything except for the possible human dump on the comic book uh, show floor at New York Comic Con? It doesn't seem like there was. Uh, so anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.